Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to look at using data aggregation techniques in pandas. We're going to see how we can take a very large data set, which consists of about 11 million rows, and summarize that data down into a very simple table. And we're going to look at the lithology composition of a specific geological group. So let's get to it in our Jupyter Notebook. So the first thing that we want to do is import pandas as PD. And PD is just an abbreviation for pandas that just makes it easier for us to call upon the functions and makes our code much more compact and neater. Once we've done that, we can then load in our data frame, which I'll abbreviate to DF, and we're going to call upon pd.read underscore CSV. And then within the brackets here, we can paste in the location of our file. In this case, I'm looking at a subfolder called Zeek data and then the train.csv file. And this training file contains about 90 plus wells of well log data that has been obtained from the Norwegian continental shelf. And most CSV files are separated by commas, but in this case, we've got a semicolon that separates that data. So we need to pass that in as a parameter. And this may just take several seconds to run as it's a very large data set that consists of about 11 million plus rows. So once that data has been loaded in, we can call upon that data frame. And then we can see all of the contents of that data frame. We can see the well name. We can see that we've got the depth column, X and Y location, and our well log measurements. And then over on the far right, what we have is our lithology and our confidence value for that lithology. So what we are interested in is this lithology column. Now, what you'll notice right away is that the lithology column is numerically encoded. So this can be tricky to work with, especially if you don't know the key. But luckily, we've got the key for this particular data set and we can transform these numeric values into text-based values that make more sense to us. So I've already got that one set up here and I'll paste it in. And we can see that we've got a dictionary with our numeric values. So what we're going to do is take the numeric values within this column and then translate it to the text version. And we'll add that as a new column within the data frame. So if I run that, we now have our dictionary and then we need to apply that to our data. And one way that we can do that is to create a new column called lift. And we will set that equal to DF and we'll call upon force 2020 litho fasces lithology and then we're going to map those numeric values to what is in our dictionary so if i pass in lithology numbers and then we can run that and call up on our data frame again we'll then see that we've got an extra column at the end of our data frame with our text-based lithology so we've got shales, we've got sandstone, sandstone shale, which is great. So this is much more readable to us. We, so we do have over a million rows in this data set, which is very unwieldy when we want to try and understand what is in this data. So one way that we can deal with this is to filter out our data for a specific geological formation or group. And this allows us to target what we're actually wanting to summarize. So you may be asked a question, what is the lithology composition of the Zechstein group within the Norwegian continental shelf? And that's where we start to filter down that data. So we, at the start of our process, we already know what we are looking to achieve. We can filter this down by creating a new variable called DF Zechstein, which is our Zechstein group. And we'll set that equal to df.query. And then we call upon the group column we're looking for the Zechstein group and we put a full stop at the end there. So what that's done is if we call upon as if we call upon that new data frame, we we'll now see that when we look at the group column, we just have the Zechstein group. If we want to see how many wells that we have that contain this particular group, we can call upon the, the data frame again for Zechstein and we will call upon the well column and then call upon unique and we get back a list of eight wells that contain that particular data. And you can see that we've gone down to 12,000 rows of data instead of a million. So let's subdivide our data frame again as we're only interested in the well name and the lithology. So we can create a new variable called DF Zechstein and underscore lifts, which is our abbreviation for lithologies. And then we call upon 
DF Zechstein and we are only interested in the well and the lift column. So if we call upon that particular data frame again, we will now see that we've just got the well name and the lithology. So that's great. Now we've got a very simple data frame that we can begin to aggregate. And to begin aggregation, we're going to use a number of chained pandas functions. So first off, we're going to group the data by well, so that we've got a summary per well. And then we're going to count the occurrences of each lithology within each of those groups. And from that, we'll normalize that data so that it goes between zero and one. So rather than having sandstone that occurs five times and shale occurs 15 times, the function is going to then return 0.25 for sandstone and 0.75 for shale in that example. And then we need to unstack our data frame. So we need to remove the multi-index that will be created. So let's create our summary underscore df, which is our summary data frame. And then we're going to call upon df zestein lifts and we're going to group by, and this is the column that we're going to group our data frame by, in this case, well. And then we call upon dot value counts and we'll set the normalize parameter equal to true. So if we call upon the summary data frame again, we'll see that we've got a summary for our wells. This is what we've grouped by. Then we've got our lithology. And you can see that we've got shale, we've got 0 0.45, 0 0.38, 0 0.16. So if we didn't have this normalized parameter in here, we would end up with the actual value count. So the, having that normalized parameter allows us to normalize it to zero to one. And then as you see that we've got almost like a multi-index data frame here, we've got well, and then with nothing under that, and then we've got multiple lithologies, and then the same with the next one, and then with nothing under that column here, and then we've got the multiple lithologies. So what we're going to do is unstack it. And as some wells don't have some of the lithologies, we want to have all of the lithologies present within our data frame and any lithology that is not present within a well will be set to a value of zero. And then we can just call, and we can do that by using fill underscore value is equal to zero. So when we call upon that summary data frame, we can then see that we've got the lithologies along here on the columns, and then we've got the well names down here on the row labels. And then we can see we've got our individual values as decimal form within that data frame. So we could do a couple of things to make this a little bit more readable. So we can call upon summary date underscore data frame. We can stylize that data frame. So we call upon style dot format and we pass in our formats, our format that we want and we'll set it to two decimal places and we'll have it set to be a percentage. So when we run that, we get back our data frame and now we can see that we've got our percentage values rather than these decimal values and we can see that we've lost some of the decimal points. So this is already much more readable and we can easily extract this and put it into a report in this form. However, if we call upon that summary data frame again, we'll see that the numeric values haven't changed. So one way we can change these decimal values into percent is just multiply the entire data frame by 100. So this is great if we want to create some visualizations based on these percentage values rather than decimal values. So for example, we've got an infographic here of the lithology variations within the Zechstein group plotted as radial bar charts. And we can see that these are actual percentage values rather than decimal values. Although as there's no scale on here, we could use either. So there we have it. In this video, we've seen how to create a table of lithology composition for an entire data set. If you've enjoyed this content, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more from this channel, click on that subscribe button and ding that notification bell. So thanks for watching and until next time, bye for now.